In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. Sisters and brothers, to prepare ourselves now to enter into these sacred mysteries on this, the Feast of the Ascension of the Lord, let us call to mind for a moment our sin, our failing, and ask the Lord for his pardon, mercy, and forgiveness. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I fail to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
let us pray. Gladden us with holy joy, almighty God, and make us rejoice with devout thanksgiving. For the ascension of Christ, your Son, is our exaltation. And where the head has gone before in glory, the body is called to follow in hope. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. In the first book, Theophilus, I dealt with all that Jesus did and taught until the day he was taken up. After giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen, he presented himself alive to them by many proofs after he had suffered, appearing to them during 40 days and speaking to them about the kingdom of God. While meeting them, he enjoined them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, about which you have heard me speak. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. When they had gathered together, they asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? He answered them, it is not for you to know the times or seasons, but that the Father has established by his own authority. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, throughout Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, they were looking on. He was lifted up, and a cloud took them from their sight. While they were looking intently at the sky as he was going, Suddenly, two men dressed in white garments stood beside them. They said, men of Galilee, why are you standing there looking at the sky? This is Jesus who has been taken up from you into heaven. We'll return in the same way as you have seen him going into heaven. The word of the Lord. reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, may the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, 
give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation, resulting in knowledge of him. May the eyes of your hearts be enlightened, that you may know what is the hope that belongs to his call. What are the riches of glory in his inheritance among the holy ones? And what is the surpassing greatness of his power for us who believe? In accord with the exercise of his great might, which he worked in Christ, raising him from the dead and seating him at his right hand in the heavens, far above every principality, authority, power, and dominion, and every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the one to come. And he put all things beneath his feet and gave him as head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of the one who fills all things in every way, the word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. The eleven disciples went to Galilee to the mountain to which Jesus had ordered them, and when they had saw him, they worshipped, but they doubted. Then Jesus approached and said to them, All power in heaven and earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always and to the end of the age. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. Just uh, important to note is the commission, right? What is it that we are called to do? Jesus' final words, and you think for a moment about when someone speaks to you uh, their final words. This has a particular resonance, doesn't it? When you uh, speak to someone for the last time, if you've ever had the opportunity to speak to someone as they are, they, they are dying, they say their last words to you and those words have a, a particular resonance. Or you're saying goodbye to someone who you know you will not see ever again and uh, you treasure those words. And what are the words that Jesus uh, says to you, Behold, I am with you always until the end of time. Go therefore, make all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit. That for us, our faith is not simply a private matter which was given to offer me comfort in the midst of difficulties, uh, enabling me to understand the, the circumstances. My faith demands something of me, which is, is that my faith demands that I share my faith with others. Why is that? Because as we heard in St. Paul's letter to the Ephesians, may the eyes of your hearts be enlightened that you may know what is the hope that belongs to his call. What are the riches in the inheritance among his holy ones? Is when we have had that experience, when we have had that experience with the person of Jesus Christ, that experience is so overwhelming we want to testify to the reality. And, and notice that in your life and my life that uh, when we have had some positive thing take place. We want to, to share that uh, experience with others. You know, there was a very popular uh, play on Broadway just a few years ago, Hamilton. And people couldn't wait to go out and say, I, I saw Hamilton and share about all the music that they, they listened to at Hamilton. And they would say, you gotta see this performance. It costs so much, you gotta go. This is what we talk about a Broadway show. What about the person of Jesus Christ? The person of Jesus Christ who has transformed my life. This, I think, is, uh, is what is important for us, is that Jesus has transformed my life and that 
changes the way in which I live. And we hear this a little bit in St. Paul's letter, in St. Paul, as he write, as St. Luke, rather, writing in Acts of the Apostles, Theophilus. What is, who is Theophilus? Theophilus is the lover of God. Who's the lover of God? You and me. Right? So St. Luke is here saying, in the first time when I told the story of the life of Christ, right? this, this lover of God. And again, how beautiful uh, that at the very beginning, I love the very, uh, the very end of this passage where it says, Men of Galilee, why are you standing there looking at the sky? This Jesus who has been taken up from you into heaven will return in the same way as you have seen him going into heaven. I think to myself, how often is it that I am just looking up into the sky? Sometimes uh, you experience this powerful event and you just stand there looking up into the sky. But what we know is, is in Acts of the Apostles, you have to move from looking up into the side to know what has happened in Acts of the Apostles. Now all of a sudden, it's the Apostles who are the ones who are proclaiming Christ crucified, Christ risen from the dead. Now it's the Apostles who are the ones who are feeding the hungry. Now it is the Apostles who are healing the blind, the lame, the deaf, the dumb. Now the work of Christ that we heard all throughout the Gospels becomes the work of the Apostles becomes the work for you and me today. May God bless you. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. So now we present our prayers of petition to our Heavenly Father. We pray for our Holy Father, Pope Francis. We pray for all those who are bishops, priests, deacons, and religious. We pray to the Lord. We pray for all those who are in positions of authority within our country and remembering in a particular way our president, all our elected officials, those who are our government officials, that the Holy Spirit always come upon them so that they might always seek to be of assistance to those who are in distress and in the margins of our society, we pray to the Lord. We pray for those who are sick and suffering. We pray for those who are abandoned and forgotten. We pray for those who are hungry. We pray for those who are anxious or depressed. We pray to the Lord. We pray for all those who are in need. We pray for those who have a need of assistance in terms of housing, Pray for all those who are in need of health care. Pray for those who are in need of food, those who are in need of sustainable work. We pray to the Lord. We pray for ourselves that uh, during this uh, season of Easter, and particularly on this, the Feast of the Ascension of the Lord, that we may allow ourselves to experience the love of Jesus Christ and testify to that experience to all those whom we come into contact with. We pray to the Lord. And uh, for those needs and petitions which lie now in the silence of our own hearts, we pray to the Lord. Heavenly Father, you know all our needs and petitions here and answer us if they be in accord with thy holy will. We ask this as all things through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Mass this morning is offered for the intentions of the parishioners of St. Joseph's and St. Teresa's for all our television audience.
pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be found acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept the sacrifice of your hands to the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. We offer a sacrifice now in supplication, O Lord, to honor the wondrous ascension of your Son. Grant, we pray, that through this most holy exchange, we too may rise up to the heavenly realms through the same Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and with, with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up, up to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for the Lord Jesus, the King of glory, conqueror of sin and death, ascended today to the highest heavens. As angels gazed in wonder, mediator between God and man, judge of the world and Lord of hosts, he ascended not to distance himself from our low holy state, but that we, his members, might be confident of following where our head and founder has gone. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exult in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. You therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant, Francis, our Pope, and Nicholas, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants who are living. And all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise that they offered for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls and hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. Celebrating the most sacred day on which your only begotten Son, our Lord, placed at your right hand of glory, our weak human nature, which he himself had united, which he, he had united to himself, and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever Virgin Mary, mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, and your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmos and Damien, and all your saints, we ask that through their merits and prayers in all things, we may be protected by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, order our days in your peace, and command that we may be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven to you, O God, his almighty Father, 
giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. A mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O oh Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O oh Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion of the resurrection from the dead and the some glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant, Abel the Just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have died have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through the same Christ, our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord, you sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to sing. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sin, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will, to live and reign forever and ever. 
The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer one another now the sign of Christ's peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Corpus Christi. Let us pray, almighty ever-living God, who allow those on earth to celebrate divine mysteries, grant, we pray, that Christian hope may draw us onward to where our nature is united with you through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. Have a very nice day now. Thank you.